Comencem, seguim amb els canals anglesos, amb aquestes obres tan interessants. Ara seguirem amb el John Dodwell, Chair of the Montgomery Canal Partnership, que ens presentarà el Montgomery Canal, la seva història, el seu patrimoni i la seva restauració, un treball en partenariat. Una ponència que creiem que serà molt interessant i complementària de l'anterior. Good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming to listen. And I hope the translating works so you can understand how well I do not speak Catalan. <laughs> I want to talk to you about one particular canal in England and Wales, the Montgomery Canal, about its history, how it became derelict, and what is being done about its restoration. And I want you to start with this picture so you can keep in your mind what volunteers can do. I will explain what this picture is about later on. But we need to cast our minds back over 200 years to 1796, when the first part of the Montgomery Canal was opened. It was built in three phases, the last ending in the year 1819. Most canals in England go up to the top of a hill and then down the other side using locks to get up the hill and down. But the Montgomery Canal is different. It goes down into the valley of the River Severn through 12 locks and then goes up 14 locks to reach the town of Newtown almost in the middle of Wales. And Newtown is really a bit of a mistake because Newtown was actually built over 750 years ago. If we look where the canal is, on the left-hand side of the picture, you can see some blue and red lines going into the middle of Wales. The blue lines are those which have been restored or have never needed to be restored. They have stayed navigable. The red lines are all the various derelict canals in England which are uh, in the course of being restored or where people hope they will be restored. But to concentrate on the part in Wales, you can see at the top right-hand side you have the uh, thin, the, the, the blue, light blue line of the Thlangothan Canal, which goes up to the Pont Casilti Aqueduct. And you'll notice I pronounce it differently to, to Kate, because there are so many different ways of spelling Pont, or, or pronouncing Pont Casilti. And then we have the solid blue line, which is the canal which has been restored, a dotted line not yet restored, and then a more solid line, which has been, and then finally a dotted bit. And this canal was different to many which were built to take canal into the industrial areas. This was built because there is a lot of limestone along the canal, and if you burn limestone, you get lime, and if you put lime on the fields, you, you improve the quality of the fields. And here are the remains of one limestone at a place called Pant. You can see there are, what, five, six different holes where you would burn the lime and take it up and down the canal. So the original canal builders were as much interested in improving the quality of their land as they were in making money from transporting goods. The original canal engineers, or perhaps we should call them architects, they wanted to build the canal quickly and as cheaply as possible. They were not trying to build a pretty canal, and they certainly did not expect it to last for 200 years. And it is our good fortune that they have left behind a rich heritage of wonderful buildings. On the Montgomery Canal, there are no less than 127 structures which are listed as being of special importance. And to some, the canal bridges are objects of beauty. To others, they are architectural gems. Views change over the years, but we need to remember, I'm sure, when they were originally built, 
people viewed them with disgust as they do nowadays new, new motorway roads. I want quickly to take you through some of the structures which were built, most of which are still there. I'll start with one here. Now, those of us who were there last night might recognise that chimney. It looks a little bit like the chimney at the museum, it's not quite the same. But this is another pump house, and you can see there was a water wheel, and it was powered by water from the river to pump water up into the canal. Sadly, it, it has been demolished and we can't see it anymore. But we do have some wonderful bridges. Here is one, you can see the symmetry of the bridge and there is a lock just the other side of the bridge and where there is a lock there will be, or there used to be, always a lock house for the keeper of the lock to, to live in. And in the number of cases on the Montgomery Canal we still have those lock cottages. But they were not all brick. Here is one with a cast iron bridge with railings. And they were not all bridges over the canal. Here is one where the bridge swings. Here is a wonderful one taking you through the gorgeous the countryside. And you can see in this particular case the towpath has already been repaired. Here is another one. Again, you can see the symmetry and you can see the wonderful reflection in the water. But I'm afraid, here, here is one. Kate told us about the warehouses which were built to store goods. But if you look carefully at this warehouse, it's, the bottom part is brick, the top part is tin. And it is one of Kate's problems as to how she keeps that tin in good condition and indeed what purpose is made of a building like that. We have some wonderful aqueducts. This one is, is very strongly listed. You can see it has got some iron struts in over the years where it is needed to be repaired. But I'm afraid it is not all good news. Here is a lock which is derelict. And you can see the lock hut where the lock keeper would stay during his working day. And here is a closer up picture you can see it is decayed. I'm pleased to say that we have some proposals in hand to repair that hut. Here is an example of where the canal has dried out. Wonderful bridge, but no canal. <laughs> now, of course, as we saw in Kate's pictures, originally horses were used to pull boats along. Uh, um, but by the 1920s, the uh, canal was being less and less used. There was competition from the railways. Indeed, the railway company owned the canal, and lorries were starting. And in 1936, part of the canal bank collapsed, and of course the water ran out, and the canal was not repaired, even though law said it should be. In 1944, the railway company went to Parliament and asked permission to close the canal on the grounds it was not being used. Well, it's not surprising it was not being used if it had not been repaired. <laughs> and then after that, uh, we had the road authorities. They, they did not like some of these nice arch bridges, and they began knocking them down. But before that, uh, the, one of the people who had worked on the canal with horses as a young boy had written a diary of, of his notes of what happened, and a few years ago he published that. And here is a picture of today's horses, uh, in this case uh, not, not pulling goods, but, uh, but, but pulling a passenger boat, but you can see the traditional horse boat is a bit smaller than, than some because it's only pulling a passenger boat. As the years of dereliction went on, there was a proposal to build a new road through the town of Welshpool. Everybody objected. The people of Welshpool did not want a new road going through the town, and the people who wanted the canal restored objected because it would mean filling the canal in, 
And this takes me back to the first photograph I showed you. Over 300 people came to Welshpool one weekend and they dug out the mud and they got rid of the weed and by the end of the weekend we had the canal back with water and we had the, the mayor of the town going on a boat up and down the canal. And that started, that started the restoration and it showed that it was possible. And Prince Charles, the Prince of Wales, took an interest and more restoration followed. First around Welsh Pool, and then some of the bridges which had been destroyed, they began being rebuilt. And by 19... Uh, sorry, this, this photograph is about 2010. You can see, if I take you back to... That's what it was. You can see the warehouse on the right-hand side. Here, the same warehouse, water, people enjoying it. It's all, all wonderful. And by the year 2000, about 12, 000, 12 miles each side of the town of Welshpool had been restored, and it became the centre for a charity which takes disabled children and others on boat trips. And they have so far taken... 69,000 people on their boats. And here is a picture of, of their boat coming into a canal lock. In the meantime, work had been going on on the English part of the canal. Whilst water remained in the Welsh part, in England it was different. This is where the canal had been damaged in the 1930s. And slowly the water drained away but in 1980, volunteers began to rebuild some of the locks. And here you can see what at a place called Frankton, very close to the link with the Slangothlin Canal. And here we have volunteers working away, rebuilding the canal locks. And a bit more detail, you would have thought these may be uh, paid bricklayers, but no, these are all volunteers. And it's not just the canal, some of the warehouses began being re rebuilt. You can see this transfer station and you can see that the canal bridge, but there's no canal there yet, but it's coming. And further on, we had volunteers restoring more locks. Keep your eyes focused on that little hut building at the top of the picture because a few years later, that scene had quite changed to look like that. All done by volunteers. Let's pause here and consider. By this time, 23 of the 26 locks had been restored. Fortunately, the canal was still owned by one authority. It had not been sold off to local farmers, as has happened with some canals. There were no tunnels which had collapsed, which we have to, to, to restore. And about half of the canal had been restored. And this had been done by an enormous amount of effort by volunteers. Volunteers not just working, as you saw, in the mud on putting new bricks in, but volunteers helping to design engineering solutions and raise money. And, and Kate, Kate and her colleagues in the Canal Authority had done a lot of work as well. Now, part of the canal in England is a site of special scientific interest. And in Wales, it is also a site of special scientific interest and a European special area of conservation. That means there is some wonderful natural life which needs to be protected. Because during the years of dereliction, nature had taken over. It always does if you leave things, doesn't it? And we have some rare water plants and other rare plants which need to be protected. We also have great crested newts. And great crested newts are loved by some people, but not by everybody. In Europe, as a whole, they are rare. But in this part of England, there are lots and lots and lots of them. And wherever we start digging, we 
tend to find great crested newts and we have to look after them. But I'll show you a few pictures of some of the nature reserves we have created. Here is one, you can see a swan on the far side. Here is another one, a nice one of, of young swans, one in, in the spring. And here, I hope you can see, on that wood there is a, 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 an animal we call an otter. It's quite rare, and actually that was taken by some volunteers working on the towpath, and you can see that the otter was supervising the work, watching what they were doing, making sure they did it properly. But as restoration progressed, there began to be some arguments between those who wanted the canal restored and those who wanted the canal to stay as it was. But by the year 2005, it was agreed that you could not leave the canal as it was because it would just deteriorate and everybody would lose everything. So they, they came up with a plan which showed how to restore the canal gently and also look after the, the wildlife and wild plants. And this involves building new nature reserves alongside the canal. By this time, the world economic crisis of 2007 to 2010 had arrived, and so there wasn't any money to do any of the works. Local authorities, local councils, which had helped in the past, uh, now had no money. But in England, we have the Heritage Lottery Fund, a little like the lottery I think you have in this country, and that has enabled us to get some money and we, at the moment, there is a programme of works costing about £4 million, of which the Heritage Lottery Fund has come up with about £2.5 uh, two, two, two million. And as an example of the work which we've done... Uh, sorry, wait a moment. Hang on. Oh, I've lost it. Right. Um, we have a new... Uh, a, a, a new, new nature reserve about some two hectares of water space. And the work includes relining the canal bed to make it waterproof again. Now, we are looking ahead what to do next, and we have a 10-year program of what the first phase is to finish restoring the canal in England and at the same time we need to agree on a plan what to do in the Welsh part to get to Welshpool because we have four road bridges which have been lowered and need to be rebuilt and we have to build new nature reserves in Wales and at the same time we want to help to get back to Newtown as I said they will be 750 years old fairly soon. I showed you this aqueduct earlier. A nice sunny day, looks all right, but that's quite an old photograph. You can see now trees are growing up. So one of the first things we have to do is to get that properly repaired, and with the help of Kate and her colleagues, we will hope soon to put in uh, a bid to the Heritage Lottery Fund for the money to repair it. I mentioned we have some bridges which have been knocked down. Whoops, hang on. Let me see what's happened here. Um, in these, some of these bridges go across at road level and we have got to uh, either rebuild them, or in some cases where it is a major road, we will have to lower the canal under the road by building a lock on one side to take the canal down, and then build another lock the other side to take the canal back up again. Now, I need to emphasize that we are doing this by working in partnership. 
The Montgomery Canal Partnership was set up in 1999 and has the local councils as members, the local restoration canal societies, the local environment agencies, the local wildlife trusts. There are some 20 different organizations. And we are working not just to restore the canal for its own sake, but we want to increase the tourism in the area to increase jobs. We wish to conserve the wonderful structures we have. And it's not just for boats. People will walk along the canal, people will cycle along the canal, people will use kayaks or canoes, they will catch fish. They will just simply walk along the canal as a nice quiet place to get away from the busy life of today. We are fortunate that we have keen support from the local council leaders. One of them says to me, just let me know what we can do to help. So I say, give me money. He says, <laughs> he says well, what else would you like? <laughs> but it does mean that when we talk to people in national government, we are able to say, we do have the support of the local authorities. And I have touched on volunteers. I mentioned earlier those 300 people who came to Welshpool. People said the canal should be filled in. The volunteers said no, and they did not just say no, they came along and did something. But the volunteers don't just come from the United Kingdom. Some years ago, there was a series of international work camps. A work camp is where people come and have their holidays and work on the canal. That may seem a bit odd, but that is what people do. They did then and they still do now. They will come and spend a week. My own son did this recently. His holiday, he, he helped to restore a canal and he had to pay to come and join. And in one case, we had 13 people from various parts of Europe, from Denmark, France, Germany, <laughs> Holland, none from Spain, I'm sorry to say, <laughs> but, but maybe uh, I live in hope for the future. <laughs> and they came to work at a place called, called Carrigofa. And that's what it looked like when they arrived. Here they are, working away, getting rid of all that mud. And that's the job finished. So just to take you back, that's what it looked like. I'm not saying these young Europeans did it in one week. It did take a few more years. And that is another, what it looks like today. And Sometimes the efforts of the volunteers have been recognised and in 2007 the British Royal Institute of Chartered Surveyors awarded the Welsh Project of the Year for Building Conservation to one of the local canal societies for their remarkable vision, passion and sheer determination to get things done. And these wonderful volunteers keep going. And in between the year 2008 and 2014, they have repaired half a mile of a canal by, uh, by making it waterproof again. And here it is before they started. And I want you to keep your eyes focused on that bridge so you can see the changes in the foreground. Here they are. They are putting a black uh, a plastic down as a waterproof and then you have to keep the plastic in place so you put stone on top to make sure it does not float away and here is the finished job that's where they started that's where they ended a remarkable achievement and they are still doing more for the next stage. 
And there was, a, there was a very great benefit which I get from what they do. When I talk to local councils and others about volunteers can do this, there was a time people would say, well, will the volunteers come? Have they got the right skills to do the work? And every time I am asked that, I point to pictures like that. Indeed, a little while ago, we had some officials down who are used to what volunteers can do in keeping clear the footpaths in the countryside in England, where they will cut back small trees and other things which are getting in the way as you want to walk. And they came here to find people, you can see, with their helmets, their yellow helmets, their yellow jackets. It's a serious construction site. And they were quite amazed at what they saw. That is not builders building. That is all volunteers. The people driving the diggers, the excavators, they are all skilled in doing that. And recently, we had, we had a problem. When the canal was closed, there was a railway going across the canal there, and the canal bridge got weak, so instead of rebuilding the bridge, they just filled in the canal. And you can see there was a railway embankment going across. And then, of course, the railway closed. Did they take away the embankment they had put in? No. They left it for someone else to deal with. Here is the someone else. This is volunteers. Volunteers and the diggers and on the drivers. There were 1,000 cubic meters. Five days later, gone. Take you back to there, to there. So I always say volunteers can do anything given time. And if you haven't got any money, you have to have volunteers. <laughs> and when I became chairman, I asked how much it would cost to do the next two or three miles. And the answer was 15 million pounds if we use builders. I then asked a retired engineer, would he please re-estimate the cost using volunteers? So no, no cost of builders to pay for, no office overheads, no profit. And the answer was not 15 million pounds, but five million pounds, which is needed for materials and for plant hire. So that means when I go fundraising, I can talk about the value for money. You give me one pound, I will deliver three pounds, three pounds of value. Now, before I close, I must thank the various people who have helped me with this lecture. It includes Rich Hamp, the chairman of the Shropshire Union Canal Society, who provided most of the volunteers. Also, Pete Kirkman, who has a special website, who has allowed me to use some of his photographs. And also, too, to a man called Harry Arnold of Waterway Images, who has allowed me to use some of his photographs. And the next two photographs I will show you, which are my closing ones, are photographs, one he took in 1971 and one he took in 2014. But sadly, he died last month and he will not see the restoration. But he has seen it go from this, which I showed you earlier, to that. Now here you can see the restored canal, you can see people walking, you can see the horse here pulling. That boat he is pulling is an old cargo boat. Kate was telling us they used to take cheese into Manchester and this boat, which is over 100 years old and has been restored, is one of the boats which took the cheese in. So in closing, I hope I've been able to show you something about the heritage and the history of the Montgomery Canal, 
which is a marvellous survivor of Britain's Industrial Revolution, and how it's been revived. I hope I've been able to show you the value of working in partnership and the value of volunteers and how inspirational they can be. Because please remember, thanks to them, nothing is ever impossible. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Dodwell. Thank you. Thank you for your time and thank you for your for your lessons. I think it's been a, a change to penso que és un projecte que un, un conjunt de projectes i una forma d'actuació que em sembla que estem tots ja reflexionant molt i prenen prenen classes d'aquestes lliçons una forma d'actuar molt diferent de la nostra, ja veieu els resultats, és una cosa magnífica, la implicació social i, i els resultats, i per tant, n'hauríem de prendre molt és un model molt diferent del nostre, molt difícil de transposar, però d'altra banda impressionant i amb uns resultats ja veieu absolutament brillants impressionants i que continuïn en el temps. Per tant, moltes gràcies, senyor Dotwell, per la seva presentació.